Hi, and welcome to the National New Teacher Support Podcast brought to you by New Teacher University. And I'm your host, Dr. Terry Ross. New teachers, I'm so excited that you're joining us today because today we're getting ready to go into Labor Day. And those of you that are from the South and other parts of the country that start school at the beginning of August, you've been in school for almost a month now. And so what we're going to talk about today is the Labor Day Reset. What to do before you leave going to Labor Day and what to do immediately following when you get back to reset your classrooms and to set your students up for success. So you've had time to establish your systems, put routines and procedures in place, and you've even gotten to know your students. The question is, how is it working for you? Which students are responding to the systems and which students are not responding? How many students are responding to your systems and routines and procedures? And for how long are they responding? Do they respond better in the morning or do they respond better in the afternoon? Do you have high engagement while teaching or do you have to struggle to get class participation? The answer to all of these questions, it's data for you. The answer to these questions is not an indication of your teaching ability. It is data for you to adjust plan, and implement. Therefore, don't be hard on yourself. Use this information to move forward and to get better. Remember, all information and feedback are data. It is data for you to adjust or affirm your practices. Some practices we sometimes just must abandon. It's okay. It's a learning process. And the beauty of working with children is when you need to shift or pivot, even if you made a mistake, you don't have to do a recall. This is not a product in a store. You can simply explain to your students what you are doing and why you are doing it. Even better, ask for input and advice from them on what to do next. You will be surprised at the amount of data you will receive from your students. After all, they are your customers and they are your end users. They will give you blunt and honest feedback as to what is working, working, what is not working, and why it's not working. They will also tell you which teachers are doing it well and which teachers are not doing it well. So do not get offended. Use this information. Visit the teachers that they tell you are successful and learn from them. So now I'm going to give you a list of practices, routines, procedures, and systems that you can revisit, adjust, tweak, get feedback on. Assess these systems for their efficiency and effectiveness in your classroom. Make sure that you are getting out of your procedures, routines, and uh, systems what you want to get out of them. Make sure that it's helping you to be effective in your classroom. So let's start with before the students enter the classroom. Are the desks arranged for optimum learning? Is the whiteboard protocol in place? Do you have a daily agenda? Are all student materials or supplies out that they may need for their class period? Are you ready to stand in the door and greet them with a sincere smile and welcome back? And do you have a system for taking roll? That's just before they get to the classroom because it's important for you to have everything ready. So when they get ready to cross that threshold into your door, they'll know exactly what to do. Now let's look at once your students enter the room. Is there a seating chart? Do your students know how to turn in homework? When do they sharpen their pencils? Do they know the procedures for starting class? Go to your assigned seat. Do they know to read the agenda on the board? for what will be done during class? And do they know to begin the bell ringer? Now, do you check the bell ringer? Do you engage the class and check for understanding of the bell ringer? Or do they just do the bell ringer and move on and you give them a grade or a check in your book? So all of those are systems, routines, and procedures. That's just for the students to walk in the classroom. You haven't even started teaching yet. You may have gotten to take role at this point. So now let's look at beginning the lesson. Set clear goals and objectives for the lesson. I know the district that I'm in, they have to do PBOs and the teachers have to read the PBO first and then they go through the PBO with the students and they lift all of the vocabulary and things like that. So do you have your objectives ready for the lesson? Activate or build proud knowledge. Do your students already know? Finding out what do they already know? 
What do your students already know? Model your expectations. Use the gradual release of responsibility. Go through the I do, the we do, the we do in pairs and the you do. Actively engage your students. Use at least three engagement opportunities for lessons. Avoid long periods of lecture. Make sure you break that up with some type of engagement activity. If it's elbow partners, talk to your neighbor. You can find your partners on the clock. Who's your three o'clock partner, your six o'clock, um, your nine o'clock and your 12 o'clock partner. Um, use proximity while being mobile through your class. So you're moving around, checking on your students, looking at what they're doing, encouraging them. Use positive reinforcement and encouragement and have exit tickets ready for your students when you get ready to end the lesson. Now, ending your class and exiting the room, that's a whole nother set of routines and procedures. See, we've done before they enter the room. Now we've done to begin your lesson. Now we're, we've moved into starting your lesson and now we're moving into ending your class and exiting the room. Review the key points of the lesson. Give students opportunities to draw conclusions from the lesson. Describe when the students can use this information because the students always wanna know when will I need this? So let them know, preview future lessons. Let students know, do you dismiss them or are they dismissed by the bell? So they need to know all of these things. Where's your exit ticket? How do they turn in the exit ticket? Do you check it on your way out or do they drop it in a basket and you check it tomorrow? So get all of these routines and procedures down packed so that when you come back after Labor Day, you're just reminding the students you're practicing those routines and procedures, how to line up and come in the room, how to line up to leave the room, how to go to the pencil sharpener if you need to put something in the garbage. And it's also... It's also effective, not just in elementary school, but in middle and high schools to have students with responsibilities during the class, whether those responsibilities are within a group as a recorder, a reporter, and things of that nature, or are they full class responsibilities like uh, who's passing out the worksheets or who's going to uh, write something on the board. So all of those things are important to know for you when you come back after Labor Day and for your students. So let's move into classroom management. Practice your teacher voice, not to be mean, to be heard. Your teacher voice should not be a mean voice, but it is a voice that students know when they hear it. Pay attention to your, to your tone. Pay attention to your tone. Your students should know when you mean business, not by you yelling or screaming, but by your tone. So they should know by now when you go up, when you get quiet, if you fold your arms, if you take a step back, all of that's information for your students because they're watching you. They're not going to do what you tell them to do. They're going to do what they see you do and to do what you inspect and expect. So not don't just tell them, model it for them, give them time to model it. And in fact, that's our next uh, topic here. Model the behavior that you expect. Let your students role play. Let your students establish the rules. Encourage effective effort. Avoid punishing the whole class and avoid sarcasm at all extent. Practice the routines and procedures that you expect. How to enter the room how to answer questions, how to use the restroom, how to ask to use the restroom. When to ask to go to the restroom unless it is an emergency, how to turn in homework, where to get supplies, where to return the supplies after they've gotten them. All of this is important for students to know because they're gonna spend the next eight months with you. And it's going to be important for you to understand your routines, your procedures, to know uh, your students need to know what you expect of them. And you need to be consistent with those expectations. So I hope that this refresher helps you to plan and reset your classroom upon your return from Labor Day. Thank you for what you do on behalf of our students. You are appreciated and you make a difference, new teachers. Enjoy your break, relax, and have some fun. Again, thank you for joining us on the National New Teacher Support Podcast brought to you by New Teacher University. Thank you.